Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Joseph Parish and welcome to Palm Sunday Mass. Please stand and greet each other this fine morning. Today, we commemorate the Lord's entrance into Jerusalem. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Oh, 
My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you in reply, the master has need of them, then he will send them at once. This happened so that when he had spoken through the, what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say, daughter of Zion, behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he set upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowd responded, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who has an example of humility, for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. As I look out there, I don't see all the familiar faces. I can see you on the statistics. So we have this crazy idea because we would like to continue to see your faces during the celebration of Holy Week. So Israel is putting a link up on our website for you to load up your picture and put a good picture of your head or maybe the family, or each member of the family, a headshot. And we're going to paste them in all the pews. So when we look out, we'll be able to see you as we celebrate the Lord's Supper and uh, Good Friday and the Easter Vigil and Easter Sunday. 
So I'll just go to our web page on there and you uh, can look and see how to load up the picture. We may even be able to get it on Facebook. I won't know that till another date. But anyway, hope to see your smiling faces and beautiful living colors pasted on all the pews. So, and if it gets too many, we'll put them on the walls too. Pass the word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the responsorial, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Praise Him. 
all you descendants of Jacob. Give glory to him. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks Jesus God. God. Please stand. death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed a name above all names. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare? For you to eat the Passover. He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say one, to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. 
I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came to them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to the disciples, Sit here while I go there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs. Some had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I sh shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. Then, stepping forward, he laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servants, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders were assembled. Peter was following him at, one, at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can, I can destroy, destroy the temple of God and within, within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? 
You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves, he deserves to, to die. die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who is, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You, you too were with Jesus, Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out of the gate, to the, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This, this man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you two are one, one of them. them. Even, Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. Then it was morning. All the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. The, then Jesus, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor and questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word. So the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So they had assembled. When they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over while he was still seated on the bench. His wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the ladder, louder. Let him, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he, blessed, or he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the pre soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him of his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. 
weaving a crown out of thorns. They placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out, off to be crucified. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry the cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him. And they, re and they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Like the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elisha. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, Wait let, let us see if Elijah, Elijah comes, comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, Truly this, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days, I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secured until the third day. 
lest his disciples, disciples come and steal him, him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once more, we have listened to the story of the passion and death of Jesus, and as I reflected on the readings, I came to realize that with the current crisis facing our world, many thoughts and questions perhaps crowd our minds at a time like this. So I would like to suggest one simple idea on this Palm Sunday. God suffers with us. Even our reading from the book of Isaiah reflects the idea that God knows our suffering. Being God, how could he not? But what of our own Christian beliefs? What do they add to that simple fact that God, the very God who created us, became one of us and took on our flesh and blood and bones, ate and drank just as we do? laughed, and as we heard in last week's gospel, while he was at the tomb of his friend Lazarus, he cried. He spoke, he slept, he touched, he healed, and as we'll remember in a special way during this Holy Week, like all of us, he suffered. And as will be inevitably happen to all of us, he died. So it is not only because God is all-powerful and all-knowing that God understands our suffering. It is also, and perhaps most importantly, that God has personally experienced our suffering. In Jesus, God has had a most vivid and profound experience of what it means to be weak, like the weakest of us. He knows what it's like to be snubbed by people from his own town to be insulated, insulted by local authorities, to have one of his closest friends swear that he does not know him, and to have someone he loves kiss him as a sign of betrayal. Suffering like death is inevitable. When it comes, we have a choice. We can enter into ourselves and suffer alone, but such suffering shrinks and diminishes us, or we can open ourselves to others. Indeed, as a Christian, as a member of Christ's own body, I dare not insist on suffering alone. Suffering is my share in the passion of Christ. I suffer with him. Remember the morning offering you were taught as children? It's still appropriate. I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day. United with Christ's passion, my passion can touch my sisters and brothers with redeeming grace, can lend them the courage of Christ, the peace of Christ, yes, even the joy of Christ. I suffer with them and they with me. A reporter once walked along the streets of Calcutta as he interviewed Mother Teresa. And as they walked along, Mother Teresa suddenly stopped. And looking down an alleyway, she noticed that there was a man laying there in the gutter. She immediately turned and went and knelt by the man, took his hand and comforted him as much as she could as he died. After he died, she then rose and continued on with the reporter. The reporter asked her, because he was fairly taken back by this, and asked Mother Teresa where she had found the strength to deal with the terrible poverty and constant death that surrounded her in those terrible streets of Calcutta. And her simple reply was, 
pray, pray, pray. We may not be able to physically comfort or embrace those who are suffering because of the current pandemic, but with the current stay-at-home orders, we have been given a very special gift, the gift of spare time, time we can use to follow Mother Teresa's example and pray for those who are ill, pray for those who are isolated and alone, pray for those caregivers who risk their lives to bring healing and comfort, both physically and spiritually. We can also take some of this new time that's on our hands to read the scriptures and meditate on how they are speaking to us, especially in this very difficult time we're living in. As I see it, this is our only choice as we enter into Holy Week. It's our week too. It's our journey to Calvary along with Jesus. The question is, how will we go? Alone with our pain or in the company of others? Clutching our cross to ourselves or with our arms stretched out like his, opening ourselves in prayer to our crucified brothers and sisters. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand for the creed. We'll be doing the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in God, in God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell, and on the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He will From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Adam, Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. As we come deeply into the mysteries of Holy Week, we see the fullness of God's love for us, giving himself even up to death in a cruel and unjustified death. So conscious of God's overwhelming love and concern for us, let us open our hearts and our petitions to the Lord. For our bishops, our priests, and ourselves, that like Jesus we may be true friends of the poor and suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as Christ did not pride himself on being the Son of God, we do not pride ourselves on being closer to God than those of our separated brethren. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That God's revelations to his prophets may become the Easter reality for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who mourn the death of those who were close, for those who grieve over losses and failures which seem to destroy their lives, that they may know Jesus as their brother and share his triumph, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those whose ideals are high and whose hopes is strong, that they may persevere like Jesus to the end, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We offer so many prayers for the victims of the coronavirus and we offer so many for the uh, medical teams who put their own lives at risk. So let's uh, offer another one from them, for them, all of them. For we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And let's pray for people of faith, whether they be Christian, Muslim, Jew, other religion, uh, who cannot congregate in their faith assembly. Let's pray that this time can be used in some way to further and deepen their faith as they try and live out the mystery of God's plan and perhaps take some opportunities to read or watch some videos or get into some exchanges with other persons uh, to help them in their prayer and their faith. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we offer all our prayers, trusting in God's accompanying love always. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated for the preparation of the gifts. We want to thank you all of those who have signed up for the automatic giving and those who have been sending in their envelopes through the mail. Your faithfulness is more important than you can imagine. This, however, is a minority of our parishioners. We need the contributions of all to continue the same level. As before the coronavirus crisis, in order to continue the services of our parish, please sign up for the automatic giving on our parish website, stjosephsunnyside.org or sanjosesunnyside.org, or have your bank mail us a check from your account or mail your check, or bring your check to the drop box safe outside the office or on the front door of the rectory or through PayPal, through Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, if your bank supports these. We are trying to continue ministering to you in this crisis by presenting our regular Sunday Masses on the YouTube channel called St. Joseph Sunnyside. Our weekly Masses, Monday through Friday, are posted each day at 11 a.m. Our YouTube channel, St. Joseph Sunnyside, also invites you to Father's 62nd Parish News Briefing, followed by a brief prayer Monday through Friday at 9 p.m. Setting up this YouTube channel has and, has and prepared our Masses news and prayers for you have taken an extraordinary amount of time for our staff, Israel Estrada, Elizabeth Estrada, and two volunteers, Fabian Garcia and Christian Martinez. We are answering the phone and responding via text and email. We are responding only on one of our Facebook pages, St. Joseph Sunnyside or San Jose Sunnyside. We are trying to serve as normally as possible. There are links below this video which will take you to our website and with some of these ways to donate from there. We are still the church, even when we cannot come together. Let us pray that the day when we can share the holy sacrifice of the Sunday Masses as a family again may draw near. During the preparation of gifts, we will sing the Jesus song. Please join in if you know this.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, be acceptable to God the Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit by us our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great. You have fashioned all your works in wisdom and love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, and while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O oh God, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit they may be truly become a sacrifice, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into our heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Oremos, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of God's peace. Without touching.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us hope to, to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Don't go away yet. We have a final blessing, special one. Just remind you, try to load up your photos. Uh, we'll put them around here, and uh, we'll even send you some pictures and post them on Facebook so you can see how many uh, showed up. So, again, thank you to the choir. Uh, great, and thank you to the good deacon. Thank you to our wonderful altar server, to our wonderful lector, the Ramos family. You are just golden people, yes. Thank you so much, and to our film crew here, Christian and Israel. Uh, Holy Thursday, bilingual mass at 7 p.m. Good Friday, 6 o'clock. Good Friday, liturgy, English, 7.30, Spanish. And Easter vigils, bilingual, starts at 8 o'clock on Saturday. And on Easter Sunday, we're on festival schedule. We'll have mass at 9 o'clock, English, and uh, 11 o'clock, Spanish. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in. May the Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, Come to us all and remain forever. Amen. Go and share the good news of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Our closing hymn, Jesus Remember Me. Come into your kingdom.